I, I appreciate that they maintain the, the smells and I don't have to go to bed smelling like my dinner. See, um, I, I want to go to bed smelling like my dinner. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Food 52 Test Kitchen. My name is Josh, I'm the Test Kitchen Director here. We get a lot of questions from the Food 52 community about braising. Why do we do it? What's the best recipe? I wanna take a step back for a moment and talk about braising in general. The reason you do it is you have tough cuts of meat that require long cooking times in order for them to become tender and delicious. All braises follow the same general formula. You have the meat, you're gonna sear it, you're gonna remove it, you're gonna add some mixture of vegetables. You're gonna sweat those for a little while, also caramelize them depending on your preference. You're gonna deglaze with some liquid. You add the meat back and you cook it for a long amount of time and this tough meat is gonna turn tender and delicious. Today we're making asobuco three different ways. One, classic in the Dutch oven. I feel really comfortable with this guy over here. We're gonna sear in the Instapot and then use the slow cooker setting on this to see how it compares to the Dutch oven. And then we're gonna move on to the slow cooker and just throw everything in there with no searing at all. I'm using a neutral high heat oil. The reason I believe in searing the meat is I think that as the meat gets caramelized, it adds flavor to the final dish. Some people are comfortable adding the meat, adding the liquid, and letting it all cook together. It'll be interesting to see at the end with the taste test whether the seared meat that's been braised has different flavor than the meat that just gets cooked in the slow cooker without having been seared first. I waited until the oil was smoking hot. If the oil isn't extremely hot, you're not gonna brown the meat, you're just gonna steam it. I also don't overcrowd the pan. It's in a single even layer. If you try and do too much at once, it's gonna steam rather than sear. Use a lot of oil, you get a lot of nice brown color. When the meat is removed, I'm gonna pour off the excess oil before I add the vegetables. So the final dish isn't gonna be swimming in oil, this is just temporary. The thing about the raw vegetables is that they have a lot of moisture in them themselves and the vegetables are gonna work to deglaze the pan a little bit too before we even add any wine or stock. I like to season the vegetables with salt early here in the cooking process. The salt is gonna draw the moisture out of the vegetables and it's gonna help unstick some of the flavor from having seared the meat just now. We're doing a simple version of asobuco today. If you want to throw in some herbs though, like fresh thyme or rosemary or bay leaf, feel free to do so now. The vegetables here, I'm looking for them to get just a little bit soft and a little bit caramelized. Should take five, 10 minutes. Once I see that, I'm gonna add the liquids. Uh, it's important to note, we're searing the meat and that flavor is gonna go into the braise here, but we're also getting a little bit of color on the vegetables that's gonna further differentiate this version from the slow cooker version. In a traditional braise, Usually you add some uh, wine to deglaze the vegetables and you can add some stock and you add the meat back into the pot. You don't have to use alcohol, you can deglaze with stock. We got one question from a community member asking about like what quality of wine should you use when you're cooking. Anything that is like good enough to drink should be good enough to cook with. You're condensing flavor so the wine should be affordable but still tasty. The moment you add the liquid, you wanna take your wooden spoon and be scraping the bottom of the pot any little stuck caramelized bits are gonna get unstuck and mix in with your liquid. It's gonna make a more delicious sauce. So these are just chopped tomatoes and some chicken stock. At this point, I'm gonna nestle the meat back in among these vegetables and the liquid in the pot. And I'm gonna cook it in the oven covered at 325. After about an hour, I'm gonna check and I'm gonna flip the meat and it should go another hour and it should be basically falling apart tender after that. So I feel pretty confident using the Dutch oven like you just saw, less confident using the slow cooker and the Instapot. So I'm calling on Eric, my coworker, to come in and bail me out. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for having me. So what are the advantages of slow cooker, Instapot, rather than the Dutch oven? Yeah, so for me, I, I, I do love that old fashioned Dutch oven kind of cooking, but um, I, I'm a sucker for these conveniences. Uh, I love the slow cooker, I love the Instant Pot, um, and, and I live in a tiny apartment, so 
I, I appreciate that they maintain the, the smells and I don't have to go to bed smelling like my dinner. See, um, I, I want to go to bed smelling like my dinner. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that's a joke, but I do like when there's something bubbling on the stove right, and it right. kind of fills your apartment with that warmth and the aroma of whatever it is. Uh, for me, it's like coming home from work, um, it's pretty late, um, you know, it, it's nice that you don't have to turn on the stove for these and they just they just kind of cook your dinner and that's nice. The reason <laughs> I became a chef was because I didn't want to touch buttons, you yeah. know? This is funny because <laughs> this is like the one moment where uh, maybe I can teach you something. Sure. All right, so we're going to start with the slow cooker because that's actually going to take longer than the Instant Pot here. Yeah. Now, we're not going to sear anything. <laughs> These are raw vegetables, it's yeah. raw uh, veal shank. We'll add the liquids, we'll add the vegetables, we'll add the meat and just let it go. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, that's all you have to do. Now, I do think that we should, when the vegetables go in, we'll give it some salt and some pepper. Yeah, for sure. So that it's a fair comparison. You, you definitely want to uh, season while, while you're putting everything in because it, it will you know, penetrate into the meat. When I cook it on the stove top, part of the alcohol from the wine kind of cooks off and evaporates. Right. Is the wine gonna cook like cook off? Yeah, there, for sure. Um, so this this lid isn't a tight fitting lid. It's um, a lot of icy steam will come out, and as will the alcohol, especially when you're braising for such a long time. What right. do we got here, actually? So chicken stock, tomatoes. red wine, chopped tomatoes, awesome. and like a classic uh, mirepoix, carrot, onion, celery, and garlic. Do you need this? These are uh, gorgeous. Yeah. So we're gonna use wow, just amazing. three pieces. Love I figure them. we should use some of the larger pieces here so that there's enough room to sear the Front. smaller ones. Is this your first time using a slow cooker? Uh, I used it once or twice. For my recipes? <laughs> yeah, for your recipes. <laughs> All right, so this is our base here. Awesome. We'll just nestle two or three of these gonna, guys down in there. I was gonna say that word. You nestle? <laughs> it's the word, yeah. Wow, and then maybe halfway through we'll flip them. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Spoon some sauce. Put the lid on top, and then there's a great convenience with the crock pot to cook it on low and then have it going for like eight hours. But I really love the high function. Mm -hmm. and I think that's like the same kind of effect as if you were to do it in a low oven. You just cook it for a shorter amount of time. It just, I think it tastes better. All right, ready to do the, the Instapot. Yeah, yeah, let's go. It says the word hot now, which makes me think it's hot, which yeah. is good. We're in the saute function, and yeah. I'm just adding a little oil to it. I, I take it very seriously that when I do it on the stove top, it has to be really, really hot to get color. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so I'm curious how hot this will get, how much how much color we'll get on this. Yeah, and the Instapot says hot when it's ready. Um, and Josh has seasoned these with salt and pepper yes. beforehand. So we're gonna see here. All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> Good sound. Oh, look at that marrow. I'll drop this Delicious. third one. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited yeah. for the marrow. And that's gonna mix in with the sauce. I figure we'll give it about five minutes on each side. We'll see how much color we can develop here. Sounds good. So, we cooked the asabuco on one side in the Insta Pot. It took longer than it took on the stove top, but you can see in the pot here, there's all this nice caramelized, like little stuck on bits. When we add the liquid and we scrape that up, it's gonna go into the sauce. I do anticipate that this is gonna, yeah. it's gonna taste different than that. Yeah. This one doesn't have those brown bits in it. Right. We'll this, yeah, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll see. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna return the meat back. It's gonna sear on the other side and then we'll keep going. The meat itself doesn't have a ton of color. If I let it go another 10 or 15 minutes, it would probably continue to caramelize. But there's a lot of really nice caramelization inside the Insta Pot itself. Smells really good. Yeah, and as we add the vegetables here, the vegetables themselves are even gonna help deglaze nice. some of that caramelization. You know, this smells amazing, but it's, uh, this is why I, I kind of love the slow cooker. I don't, I don't really want my apartment to smell like this. Yeah. For 24 hours, but. For longer. So Instapot has done a pretty good job here of sauteing these vegetables, and there's even more nice caramelization happening on the bottom of the pot there. Right, right. At this point, I'm gonna add the red wine, and then we're gonna scrape the bottom of the pot a lot to gather up all that good flavor. All right, wine in, tomatoes are gonna go in, and then the chicken stock, and then we'll nestle those asabuco back in as well. Now we'll see how intuitive this lid is, huh? So yeah, now we're just gonna put this on. Make a little noise. 
Wow. That's how you lock it. It um, said the word lid, and then it said the word on. <laughs> yeah, it's very smart. And then you <laughs> want to make sure that this is sealed. Over here, we're gonna uh, put it to pressure. Yeah. Uh, when does it start to? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna pressure cook for 40 minutes. Yeah. And then that's when you release it, and be careful with your fingers. Um, and then this is just gonna slow cook for like four hours. Yeah. And we'll be back. So we're back. Three and Asabuco, three different ways. I gotta say, they look pretty different. They look so different. <laughs> it's kind of like a trick question. Like I, I, it's it's a, this nice gradient. I kind of can guess which one's which maybe. Sure. I, I'm, I'm nervous because I really want the slow cooker to win. I will say yeah. this. Yeah. Rather than just the, you know, the color of the sauce, right. I think we should focus on the texture of the meat. Yes. And then just overall flavor. Flavor. Even yeah. though this one looks the prettiest. For sure. <laughs> You want to start down here? Yeah, that sounds good. Cool. Okay, here you go. It's really gorgeous. Nicely plated. Nice and tender. It is. I love how gelatinous that beer was. Mm. Tastes good. Like comfort food. I wonder if certain meats would fare better in the slow cooker rather than others. Yeah, I really feel like it's a case by case thing. It depends on the recipe and what you're going after, but. Um, okay, you want to try the next one? Yeah. That marrow was really good, oh, right? Oh yeah, that was good. Mm. Number two. This one's really pretty. It's like, I think this one's the most photogenic, mm. perhaps. Um, Feels like this meat is a little more tender than the first one we just tasted, just based on pressing the fork into it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. I do think this meat is softer than this one. Yeah. In terms of flavor, I think they're pretty similar. Yeah. Like, if I close my eyes, I'm not sure that I could really tell a difference flavor-wise between the two. Even texture, they're pretty similar. Right, the real test is this. So I just got like this broth. It really reminded me of like vegetable soup. From yeah. Cafeteria school days. And this one reminded me <laughs> of that, actually. Like, oh, this one reminded me of that. Uh, <laughs> something nostalgic from like childhood that my mom would have made kind of thing. Right. <laughs> these veggies were obviously like, you know, mushier than these. Um, Hmm. So I don't know. I like that these the vegetables here had integrity. Right, right. They didn't fall so much apart. Curious to try this one. This one is like very deeply browned, and it looks like it's going to be a very flavorful sauce. The sauce is less uh, watery, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Mm. I think there's more flavor happening here. More flavor, but the meat is not as soft. I agree. Um, I agree. Let's cut the nonsense. We all know. I think we all know which one's which, right? Is that right? Wait, do you want to get? Do I kinda, you want to guess? I kind of want to taste this. Okay, <laughs> Dutch oven. Yeah. Um, you know, like instant pot and slow cooker, maybe. Right, that's correct. Okay. Now that being said, <laughs> uh, I like what you said about the texture of the meat. I do think that, just in terms of like the the delicacy of the meat, I would take these two over this one. Yeah, me too. Uh, but in terms of overall flavor and the sauce and the richness and everything, I think. Yeah, um, for me, it's the texture of the meat. This was very worth it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I haven't had the marrow in here. Oh yeah. It's really nice. I, I, I like how brothy this was. Um, also, this takes 40 minutes, right? It's right. crazy. Um, so there, right, and we could talk about not just the flavor and the texture, but also the, like how much cleaning you have to do, how, yes. much, what, how much of a time commitment was it? Yeah, that's actually why I love the convenience cookers because you can just throw into the dishwasher and I hate doing dishes. And I hate cleaning my Dutch oven so much. Um, with that said, like I, I love the marrow on this. I'm, I swear I'm not just saying that because I know this is a slow cooker one, but um, <laughs> I like the marrow on this um, and the flavor. It kind of reminds me of like um, Korean kai bitang. It's like braised short ribs um, that, that are like a little brothier. Um, which actually is kind of what I associate Asabuco with. Um, right. This one feels very like French, but yeah. these feel more like Italian to me. If you wanted to wash more dishes, you could certainly take the meat out from the slow cooker, take the meat out from the Instant Pot, and then take the liquid to like a regular pot and reduce it down until it's more of a sauce. Right. Nothing wrong with that. That's true. That's a good uh, idea. So if you, if you like the texture of this meat, but you want the sauce a little bit reduced down, just take the extra step and ladle it in a pot yeah. and reduce it down. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. You could actually also leave the 
lid off, and then I do that a lot. Oh, that's interesting. Would it, it reduce more that way? It does, yeah. The ah. slow cooker, um, it, it, it boils yeah, yeah. like water. I, I think this is my favorite. The middle um, one? Yeah, the instant pot Just one's based on texture? Based on texture and flavor. I, th I think the texture is a really big deal for me, though. It's like yeah. that softness is unbeatable. I also love the flavor of this one the most. Hmm. Like, that's not really my kind of food. I see but I think it's all a matter of taste. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's no wrong answers. This is not the kind of video series where we're gonna say this is right and this is wrong. It's the sort of thing we're gonna say all three of these are right and you can choose what works best for you. I understand the simplicity of this guy, a slow cooker. I understand the convenience of this guy, the Instapot. I will say, personally, I, I like cooking with things that don't have electrical cords or buttons. I think each version of Asabuku that came out today tasted great, so choose your own path.